Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And if everything goes to plan in this episode, the Ferrari engine will go into the Alpha engine bay, hopefully for the last time. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, as many of you saw, there wasn't a video last week because I was away driving Harry through the Victorian Alps with a bunch of other mates and uh, had a fantastic time. And I'm not sure whether that video will be out before this one or after, but uh, there'll be a video very soon on that. And uh, that's what all this stuff is all about. I build these cars so I can use them and uh, Harry gets used. So uh, hopefully we can do the same with this, but to do that, we have to get the engine back in. Um, I'll go over uh, what I did last time. So you might have seen that I was sort of trying to work out exactly how to actuate the variable intake manifolds on this engine in the last episode. And um, essentially the way that uh, Ferrari do it, they use a, uh, a, a vacuum cylinder and then have solenoids um, to actuate the, the butterflies inside this plenum and stuff like that. If you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up, and please think about subscribing, it does help us out. Now, I was looking at a bunch of different methods. I did uh, briefly show this as an example. I wasn't seriously serious about using um, uh, the central door locking actuators. There's plastic gears and stuff in here. This definitely wouldn't uh, hold up to long-term use and uh, the stresses that the, uh, the heat in the engine bay and stuff would go through. So I was considering trying to connect it up to uh, some sort of electronic servo motor actuator and um, <clears throat> it was all getting complicated and, uh, and I think it was over complicating things. The fact is, is that Ferrari organized it quite well to work with, the, um, uh, with a vacuum cylinder and I was just worried about packaging and um, I went away and I was having a think and uh, a lot of your suggestions definitely helped me that way. And uh, I actually got myself the, uh, the, the genuine Ferrari um, vacuum cylinder that, they, uh, that the 360 uses, that this engine uh, would originally use. And surprisingly, it was less than 50 bucks delivered. So uh, uh, it, was, it was a good option, it was cheap. Uh, relatively, I was very surprised to find a genuine Ferrari part for uh, a, uh, a reasonable amount. But uh, yeah, so I've got the, uh, the cylinder and <clears throat> I was trying to work out how to actually run all the hoses because I was initially thinking I had to run them out the back and trying to work away into the firewall so it doesn't look horrible because there's going to be four vacuum hoses because there's actually um, the actuator for the butterflies, which is the front, and then at the back, there's another actuator, which actually actuates a, um, uh, another valve sort of in between the two plenums that uh, um, also opens. I'm not sure on the timing of how that works with the Ferrari engine, whether they both open at the same time. They do have separate solenoids controlling them, um, but uh, that's something we can sort of sort out in the future. But uh, basically what I've got is I've got this tank, I've got a couple of one-way valves, uh, and I've got a couple of solenoids on their way so that I can basically connect it up as Ferrari did to the, uh, the vacuum ports that are on the front of the engine, run those lines to the vacuum tank uh, via some one-way valves so that the, uh, obviously it'll, it'll suck vacuum and hold it in here rather than releasing it every time you get on and off the throttle. And, uh, <clears throat> and then another two ports that go to uh, vacuum solenoids and that will, they'll be controlled by the ECU to sort of uh, turn it on or off as uh, I want to actuate these things. So um, I think that was the, uh, the, the easiest way uh, so now it's just a matter of working out the plumbing, which I think is going to go out the front. So uh, that part's done. So we can move forward on to uh, getting this engine off the stand and um, making sure everything else is done before we put it back in the car.
All right, so you saw me go into the engine bay then and put some of the Raceworks heat sleeve on the fuel and brake lines in there, at least where the exhaust passes close to them. So that's all done. Uh, I have my mounts that I made up last week for the engine and uh, I've chucked a bit of the excess sound deadening material uh, on the top and, and on the back. It just gives it a bit of a, uh, uh, a, a nice surface that the straps hopefully won't rub on the engine. So now we're gonna lift the engine off of the stand and, uh, and hope that uh, my straps and everything hold. Okay, and a quick tip while I'm here with the engine hoist, a lot of you may have these at home and um, when there's no load on it, uh, you can sit there for ages and try and jack it up until it's high enough to use for your engine. But there is a quick tip for that, because if you actually just lift it up manually and hold it up for a few seconds, the longer you hold it up, the more the uh, oil flows, let it down and it stays up. It makes life a much easier. And another thing I did to make things much easier, which I've done on uh, my hoist and on my uh, shop press, is I actually 3D printed a knob. So instead of having to take this handle out and sort of stick it on the end and turn it around to release, I've just got a, a 3D printed knob that I've got on here so I can just turn it and it releases the hydraulic cylinder. So let's lift this engine. Okay, so that was reasonably uneventful. We got the engine on the ground and now I'm going to replace the rear main seal while I'm here. I've got a brand new rear main seal and the gasket. There's actually like this sort of rear cover that you remove and, uh, and replace with the, uh, the gasket for that when you do the rear main seal. So I'm gonna do both of them right now. So I undid the rear cover and uh, what I do to get rid of the rear main seal, uh, I do a, drill a hole in the middle of the rear main seal and then put a, uh, just a, a screw in it and use that to flick it out. And um, as you can see, there's plenty of room in the back behind there to, to do that. But uh, I'm just looking at this housing and it looks like somebody has gotten this out before, but they've really gouged at the, uh, the housing because that's not me, that was already there. I swear it wasn't me, it was already there. No, it definitely was already there. So, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to just make sure I, uh, I clean this up as much as I can, but I can feel some, some damage in there. So I might get uh, some very light sandpaper out and just lightly, uh, lightly touch that, that area just to, just to try and take the, uh, the, the, the nicks off of it. I'm not sure if it was leaking. It didn't, uh, it didn't appear to have been leaking when I got it, but the engine's been sitting without proper oil in it for how know, who knows how long. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and tidy that bit up and replace the seal. We've got some, I'm going to put some silicon gasket maker and the new gasket on, uh, just a really light skim, uh, as recommended in the manual and, uh, chuck it back on there and hope we get a nice clean seal with no leaks. All right, so the rear main seal is back on with a very thin sliver of uh, silicon high temp RTV, uh, as recommended by the manual with a brand new gasket. And uh, to put the rear main seal in, I used my dimple die set. Don't, if you, ever, if you ever have to get these things out, never use screwdrivers or whatever somebody's done before. I'm really surprised because the rest of the engine looks like it's in really good shape and it was, a reasonably low kilometer Ferrari engine, for somebody to actually gouge at this thing with a screwdriver to get the rear main seal out is, uh, is pretty poor workmanship for a, uh, for a Ferrari. But um, anyway, that is good. So now it's time to bolt the adapter plate back on and uh, the flywheel. 
and I might try and torque up the, uh, the front crank bolt, but I'm not sure whether I'm gonna get enough torque on it while the engine's on the ground. I may need to have it bolted into the uh, engine bay before we can do that. So anyway, let's continue bolting things together. All right, so we have an engine kind of in the engine bay. Now I've managed to get the engine mount in on the passenger side, but uh, I did need to cut out a, a little section to fit the new Wasp alternator in, uh, because obviously when I did the original mounting, I did it with a Camry one, and this is a slightly different mounting. So it does just uh, interfere. So I'll just, uh, I'll, I'll do some more uh, reinforcing and stuff to that later. It's not a, it's not a big deal. It's easy enough to do, to do in the car. Uh, I'm not overly concerned about that. But on the other side, I have an issue that the bolt for the engine, I can't remember why I'm, I didn't do that at the time, but there's a bolt there for the engine that's touching my mount for my steering rack. Now, I don't understand why it's so close. I thought I clearanced everything, but I'm going to get that out now, lift the engine up and do a little bit of extra clearancing and also put a much smaller nut and bolt on that corner so that uh, I've got as much clearance as possible so I can actually uh, have a little bit of engine movement. All right, well, I've cleaned that bolt up. I've uh, trimmed the bolt and the, the nut, brought it right back. I've done some clearancing on the uh, steering rack mount, as you saw. Um, it's just little finessing things. Because I am I was doing all sorts of modifications backwards and forwards, it's all just been a balancing act the whole time of trying to get it just right so that it'll actually fit in the car and do the job it needs to do. So uh, let's try again, and hopefully <laughs> this time it'll stay in there. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> And it's in! That was a mission! <laughs> wow! Um, it took a lot of um, finessing to get it into the engine bay because basically uh, I'd had everything in there but I did the final welding uh, while the engine was out and I don't think I'd put the engine back in again after the final welding um, to, uh, to before I painted it. And it showed just, uh, there was just tiny little bits of movement. It was just like trying to get the, because the bolts are so tight through the engine mounts, there is zero room for play, uh, only in the sort of the, the, the rubber of the engine mounts themselves. And uh, yeah, and so it was just a matter of trying to tweak and move things to get, get that last little bit of uh, like sort of, it's sort of, you know, two millimeters out that I need, trying to sort of wedge and things like that. But uh, it's in. Uh, it's tight, 
I was always tight, but uh, the clearances are the same all the way around, which is really good. There are a couple of minor little chips uh, that I did make in the paint where my uh, those mounts on the side went into the engine bay. It's just uh, where they uh, they sat close and. Uh, yeah, I'm not overly concerned I can get in there with a touch up and airbrush them, but uh, I'll show you through the engine bay now. It's looking good. All right, and the bonnet is just sitting on there, but I just had to just quickly sit it on. Uh, nothing's bolted up and lined up properly, but just to see a bit of what it's gonna look like, I'm so happy. Um, but that is all the time I have this week, so I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Ferrari F310 was a Formula One car designed by George, John, not George, John Barnard for the 1996 season. And it was a significant departure from the previous F1 car, which was the 412 T2. The 310 was a more radical design with a narrower track and a more compact engine. The F310 was now powered by a 3 litre V10 engine capable of producing 715 horsepower at 15,500 RPM, which made it one of the most powerful engines in Formula 1 at the time. The F310 was also the first Ferrari Formula 1 car to feature gauges on the steering wheel. Michael Schumacher made his debut for Ferrari at the Australian Grand Prix in 1996 and went on to have three wins that season giving Ferrari its first wins in over two years. Despite its success, the F310 was not without its flaws. It was prone to overheating, which caused Schumacher to retire from several races that season. And also, the car's team found that its handling was difficult in some of the corners, particularly on the high-speed circuits. The car's successes in the 1996 season positioned Ferrari as a force to be reckoned with and paved the way for future successes to come. All right, guys, and this week we've got another episode of Mail Time, and I have a letter here from Les Mitting in uh, in Capel, Western Australia, and uh, he's saying, "G'day, Jeff. Been watching your build with great interest. Uh, the fact when you removed part of the bonnet, reinforcing and outer seals exposed uh, black paint was a huge surprise. I never knew the bodies were immersed in primer uh, or whatever before painting." Uh, He's included five bags of stainless steel screws used on the uh, recent refurbishment of his 1971-1750 GTV, and uh, he's had a few spares of each type. Um, and basically, he's given me a bunch of tips here on uh, some of the screws, the, the sort of tiny specific screws for a lot of different bits and pieces, um, and uh, and tips on the uh, the rubber and and that sort of stuff, um, which is uh, which is going to come in quite handy when I go through and uh, reassemble the interior and uh, all the trim bits on the Alfa Ferrari. So thank you very, very much, Les, uh, for sending that through and, uh, and all of the tips and stuff. There's a, there's a lot here and I won't read it all out. But uh, if you've got anything you would like to send through to Mail Time, you can send it through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520 Barrel, New South Wales 2576, Australia. That is a huge step forward. We have an engine in the car, I mean, the bonnet is just sitting there at the moment. It's uh, it's not bolted down. I just just wanted to see what it looked like on there, but it's uh, it's it's getting there. Um, there's still lots of things to still go on. But, so that's yeah. where all the bulldog clips went. Yes, they're all around the, the, the roof. Did you only notice that? They've been there for a couple of weeks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like, yeah, I didn't notice. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a huge step forward, and uh, I, I just love the way it's uh, coming together finally. Yeah, it's looking great. Anyway, please like, subscribe if you haven't, and let Jeff know what you think about his builds. And yeah, he's um, loves reading comments, and we will um, again Patreon. You know that. Uh, yep. Yep. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Yeah. Have a have a nice weekend, everybody. All right. Bye. See you later. Hey guys, the Ferrari F three ten was a car.
That is verbatim what's on the page, mm -hmm. word yes. for word. The F310 was also the first, <laughs> and he went on to have two more, two wins, no, nope, three wins that season making it. Yes, got it. <laughs> the Ferrari is a force to be reckoned in it. Sorry. The brand of Yes. Yeah, man. Nailed it. <laughs> well, I won't go that far. <laughs>